Hello there guys, welcome back to Genus Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today as uh, coming to the end of the day. And um, this is why yesterday on my preview I told you guys, for me the season doesn't start today. It starts next weekend, right? Or in the Europa League on Thursday, oh, Europa League, Conference League on Thursday, right? Um, because this was expected, this was going to happen, let's be honest. Um, it's so funny that um, on TikTok, as well as um, no, no, not so much on here, on Twitter and TikTok mainly, the, the the two most crazy platforms, let's say, yeah, when it comes to people's comments. Um, and I put out a prediction yesterday of three one, and I was saying the season doesn't doesn't start for me today; it starts next week. And you get thrown the label of being negative and all of that, and I don't care. I genuinely don't care. And the reason why I mention it now is to let you guys know I genuinely don't care. Because the result proves exactly what I've mentioned. It does. This was going to happen. And the fear, the reason why that I mentioned in the preview, is exactly what we saw today. It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to notice it. Or to... Many people I feel like want to shy away and pretend the problem's not there. Put your head in the sand and pretend it's not there. That's not how life works. Face the problem head on, admit it, be real about it, acknowledge it and do something about it. Instead, today what we got was, I'm not even going to say an open defence. People are going to look at the goals and go, oh, Fafana or Colwell are ridiculous. I'm not putting the first blame on them. They do have blame. They do have blame, especially for the first goal, right? Because we saw Colwell uh, going at snail's pace. Trying to close his man down, right? Haaland literally done whatever he wanted to do without any pressure, right? So the centre-backs have to do better there, for sure. Centre-backs were open. But who allowed the pressure in the first place? I'm looking at that £220 million midfield that got absolutely outdone today by a one-man Mateo Kovacic. That's the truth. That's the truth. Enzo, Caicedo, partly Lavia. Out of the three, Lavia was the best one. I think we have to admit that. Um, but Enzo, oh my God. And Caicedo in the end too, right? That's a £200 million midfield. It's shocking. And the 220 when we're putting together is Enzo Caicedo, not Lavia. Lavia did come off, um, so we're not going to blame him for that. And like I've said, out of the three, Lavia, uh, even at, at moments during that game... There was a few moments where the ball was managed to finally get out of the back because we wanted to pass out of the back numerous times and we couldn't because City know how to defend. <laughs> City know how to press. We don't. And I'll get to that in a sec. But there were a couple of times when the ball did make its way out of the back to Lavia and twice he managed to take the ball on a 180, make a quick half turn and start looking forward and distribute the ball to Palmer or whoever would it be up top. Ones to Jackson, I think, straight straight, um, straight in. So, Lavia, fair enough. But Enzo and Caicedo getting done, done by Mateo Kovacic today, who for me was man of the match, absolutely bossed that midfield. And there was one reason why. For me, one reason why. He did not stop moving. Did not stop. He was everywhere, made himself available, ran with the ball, took initiative, picked his passes, done all of that. Enzo and Caicedo can't even control a ball today, especially Enzo. Couldn't even control the ball, let alone make a pass where most times it would probably be intercepted or out for a throw or it just miss its target completely. And then we come to the actual shape, because I thought it was criminal today from Chelsea the amount of times that we would allow Man City to freely come to the halfway line and pass beyond that. Freely, freely, no pressure, no nothing, right? We'd throw one man that would try and apply a little bit of pressure, a second man a little bit, and then they would put one pass, boom, they're at the halfway line, and then they're advancing, and then our defence is under pressure. And then people are going to look at our centre-backs and go, oh, it's all your fault, it's all your fault. No, no, it's not all, it's partly their fault. When, when the ball is around them and they're dealing with one-on-ones or two-on-twos, 
then of course they've, they've got blame, like they did today, for sure. They do have blame. But that midfield, what's going on? What's going on? Whereas when you look at Man City now, when Man City, right, are defending, when it's Chelsea that are trying to build from the back, what happens? Every time we get the ball too close to the halfway line, it ends up on one of our flanks. What's the option? Go backwards. Because there's no one moving. And everyone's marked. And City are positioned correctly. And everything's on point. You ain't getting through. How many times do we have to go back? Whereas Man City, red carpet, come and c c c come make your way to the final third, please. Make your way to the final third. You've got opportunity to score, my, my good sir. Would you like a knife and fork with that, good sir? It's just not good enough. Now, some people are going to say, oh, but it's match day one, right? Cool. All right, cool. This is why I've said, because I was expecting all of this. Uh, this is why I'm not fuming. This is why I said next next week the season will start properly, uh, pr properly there because at that point there's no excuses. Today people will hold on to the fact that oh, it's Man City, it's the champions, right? All right, cool. We'll hold on to that excuse, even though for me today the performance just wasn't good enough. When we get to next week, there's no excuses. When we're facing Palace and Bournemouth and all of these guys, there's no excuses at that point. At that point, I'm expecting Chelsea to be dominating, yeah? So let's wait and see. But... Defensively, as a team, we are so open, it's ridiculous. We are so open, right? And now we talk in terms of offensively, did we even do much? We've done some. But when you don't take that initiative and you don't take those chances, the few that do come along, Jackson today couldn't read the line. Again, what's new? It's just ridiculous. This is why I scream for Osimhen or someone that's a, realistically who's available and top level, right? It's awesome, man. That's why, that's why. We're being honest here. That's why I'm screaming for him. Because I would like some top quality in this team to put those sort of chances to bed when they arise. And to be able to know how to read the line. Right? Aside from that, there wasn't much movement. There wasn't much. Everyone's static. That's what shocked me today. Defensively and offensively. There's no movement. You see Palmer. Palmer doesn't stop and it looks like he's got a free roll and fantastic. But everyone else is so stationary. Whereas City... Boom, 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 boom. Going everywhere. And you saw Kovac's goal. Haaland's goal was bad enough in terms of getting the ball into that position in the first place. But Kovacic, literally, you got the ball, mate. Go on, mate. Make your way through. Don't worry. We'll let you through. And he took the initiative, ran with it. No one stopped him. And then Sanchez. Do we even need to mention? Do we have to even talk about him? He's our number one goalkeeper, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. He's meant to be good with his feet as well. You saw the calamity that he, that, he nearly, that he nearly committed during that game too, right? We were lucky to get away with that one. Soon after that though, not long after, we did concede anyway. And then the goal in of itself. How is Kovacic getting it in from that angle? Sanchez wasn't even far from his... It, it was his near post. He couldn't make the save. Come on, man. <laughs> so Sanchez is the sort of goalkeeper to make one worldy and ten mistakes. He's that, he's that sort of guy. And today proved it. He did have one, one, one big save in the game. But a couple of errors and a stupid second goal to concede. Stupid. But that's us. We let go of Kovacic, by the way. I could have done with a Kovacic today. We could have done with a Kovacic today. If we had a midfielder that was being able to move and be mobile and take initiative and move the ball and advance and defend and get stuck in and win the ball and recuperate. And we didn't have any of that. Any of that. And we're meant to have a £220 million midfield. Bloody hell. If that's the case, we've been robbed, ladies and gentlemen. We've been robbed. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. As I've said, look, Maresca's got um, Maresca's got work to do. And we know this. We know this. And um, is he capable? Is he not? God knows. God knows. Because we don't know anything about him, really, do we? We're just people that say, oh no, he'll be fine, are tying on to false hope. People that will write him off completely in black, he's nothing, he's rubbish, right? We don't know anything about him. And that's one of the problems, is that we don't know anything about him. So let's wait and see. Coming into the games that we have uh, coming up from next week, we'll see what's going to happen against the teams that Chelsea should be getting points against. We will we'll, we'll get a big we'll get a better picture and a bigger picture and we'll see what happens. But today, it's basically same old Chelsea from last season. Nothing's changed. So let me know your thoughts down below.
Um, I don't have anything else to say. I'm not really going to go and dive in into deep individual performances and, and, and do all of that. We'll give it, I say, a couple of games, three games or so, and then we'll be able to really start analysing where players are. I do want to mention, though, Raheem Sterling and his camp and his team, I don't know what they're playing at. I don't know what they were doing before the game, releasing a statement like they did, but stupid. Stupid. But everyone's in for themselves. Everyone's in it for themselves. Simple as that. Him and this team are only looking out for his own interests. It is what it is. But the fact that he knew about not being in the team today on Friday and they released the statement one hour before kickoff. Stupid. 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 Um, I do want to mention as well, before people start using this one as an excuse, Anthony Taylor, uh, for me, didn't do much wrong today. I'm not going to wipe it on Anthony Taylor. There was the penalty claim for the handball on Kovacic. I do know that the new rules that they've put in does state that if it's in a natural position or the ball is at very close proximity, the referee's not going to give it. Natural, you could debate because his arm was kind of, it was basically basically here, right? It wasn't up here, but it was basically like there. You could, you could debate, but it was cl close proximity, so I don't know. Um, but everything else, nah. like Enzo falling over in the box, Enzo stood on, who was it, Diaz? Stood on Diaz's foot <laughs> first. So I'm not going to get into all of that and, and pretend that Anthony Taylor robbed us. He didn't, he didn't. We let ourselves down, simple as that. Take responsibility, take initiative, look at ourselves, analyse and go again. That's what we need to do. So let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Um, and let me know what you thought of the game what you thought of City, what you thought of Chelsea, and um, how do you see us going forward? Let me know. So, thank you all so much for watching, um, and I will catch all of you on the next one tomorrow. Have a good one, people. Look after yourselves. Take care, and peace.